how's it going? Good. I'm a caller and response kind of person, so I'm going to be talking to you. I come from the Church of God in Christ tradition, so an amen is welcomed every once in a while if I um, touch your heart or your spirit, and that's exactly what I'm here to do today. I don't know who this message is for. Um, it may be one of you, but I just want to tell my story and desire, oh my goodness, desire. So in, in terms of connecting with you, I want you to know that as I describe myself, I am uh, first of all a child of God. I am a mother. I'm a sister, a daughter. I'm an ex-wife twice. <laughs> um, I am uh, a cha-cha dancer. I am a gardener. I'm a little late on getting my stuff planted, but I am a gardener, love to play in the dirt. Um, I'm a military child. We have traveled. My father is a retired military officer, warrant officer, uh, helicopter pilot. So I grew up in the military culture and background, yes. Have I connected with you in any way? All right, see? And I'm an African-American woman, which makes my perspective maybe a little bit different than those of you that may not be. And that's the story that I want to come to you with, because even though you may not be African-American, we've connected already, and the goal is for you to know that desire, wherever it comes from, is in all of us. It is in all of us. Now, in my culture, you heard him say successful entrepreneur. In my culture, it's not about business. We don't have that many black business people that we can look up to. There's a few, but not that many in general. Entrepreneurship is not where we go. We go to college to get a good job. Are you with me? We go to college to get a good job, like many of you. But some of you have had privilege in that you've grown up and the talk around the dinner table constantly is about business and stocks and you know who's buying what and selling what and real estate and that that doesn't happen constantly or as a norm in my culture. So I have always had this entrepreneurial spirit. My mom will tell you, mommy will tell you in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, she would sell lemonade on the corner, popcorn balls. I even organized, a, we lived in Hawaii, so I organized a hula show and charged the neighbors to come see their own kids. You know, I have always had this entrepreneurial spirit. But when I talked about owning my own business, you're like, yeah, right, you know, you gotta go to school and get a job. So that's, that's, all I, that's all I knew. That's all I knew, but I knew in my belly that there was a desire to be and do something else. You know, what about you? Is this, are you doing exactly what you want to do right now? Are you there? Are you desiring something else? Okay, now I am truly a government worker. I've done it. Okay, city of Tacoma, when Lyle was talking about all of the changes that we're going through, I have served as the Equal Employment Opportunity Officer for the city of Tacoma. I have served as a state of Washington worker. I have served as a federal government worker, Department of Commerce and Department of the Navy. So I know government. And here's what happened. I'm driving to work one day, and I talk to God in my car. I don't know about you, but I do, <laughs> out loud. And it was like this, because we have real conversations. I was like, Lord, you know what? I'm driving to Olympia. It's like, you know what? I don't know what I want to do, but I know what I don't want to do. <laughs> okay? And this job and this environment and this culture, I don't want to do that anymore. I just don't, but I don't know what I want to do. And you know, sometimes that's just okay to get to that point. 
When you can say to yourself, I don't know what I want to do, but I know what I don't want to do. So do you know what happened? I went to work that day and it was like something just lifted me up. And I walked into my supervisor's office and said, I need you to lay me off. <laughs> this is real talk, you guys. This is real talk. Because I had a mortgage. I had a daughter. Remember I said, I'm a mother. I'm struggling. You know, she got expensive taste, trying to keep up with the Joneses at school, single parent, doing all of that. But I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I know that I desired in my belly to do something different. And if I didn't take that leap and do something drastic at that point in time, I could just see myself retiring in 30 years with the gold watch and mad. <laughs> Saying, what was all this about? Seriously, I mean, that is what the desire was for me. So I was like, I need you to lay me off. And my supervisor was like, oh, no, you didn't just come up in here and ask me to lay you off. I was like, mm-hmm, I seen your budget. I know, <laughs> and I know how to read it, too. Okay, I've seen your budget. I know that this is a gift. <laughs> this is a gift with the salary and the benefits. This is a gift. So let's find... Uh, this is mutual here. Please let me go. Okay, because from the mindset, right, the mindset, the culture that I come from, when you talk about freedom, freedom has many different meanings for us. I don't know if, you, if you've ever heard the works of Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, she said, I've freed thousands of slaves, and I could have freed thousands more if only they knew that they were slaves. The mindset, right? The mindset. I just knew that this entrepreneurial spirit was in a government worker's job and the two don't mix. Where are you? You know, I'm just asking. I'm just passing through today. Like I said, I don't know what the word, who the word is, but you may be sitting here going, yeah, that's my story too. I just knew that it didn't work. And the definition that I had just learned about faith, okay, faith is leaping and believing that the net will appear. You got to, I mean, bam, and just believe, hello, God, please, 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 you know, but you have to believe it. And I don't know what came over me that day but I did it. Fast forward. There's a price to pay for courage. And I jumped and believed that the net would appear, but I didn't know about all the challenges that would come with it, starting with family. Now, I, was that, I had the uh, second ex-husband at the time. The first one didn't last very long. But the second one, I talked about this with him, let him know how I was feeling, asking, you know, how we women ask permission, you know, just, just getting an understanding, babe, how is this gonna work? We're going from a two income family to a one income family. It's going to be tight. Is it okay? Can I do it? If I do this, then you're going to get this. All of that. Understood, settled, bam. When it was done, and then the bill started to come, and there was, there was how, how do you say it, there was too much month at the end of the money, <laughs> then it got rough. So without going into too much personal detail, he is my ex-husband. <laughs> so, I'm on my own. And my parents, oh my goodness, that was probably the roughest part. You've got to be prepared for the feedback. When you step out on faith and step out on courage and in your desire, you've got family may be the ones to hurt the most. You've got to be ready for that. Because my parents, and coming from their perspective, and it's all about perspective, 
They put me through my undergraduate experience. It took me six years to get a degree from WSU. Oh, well, you know, my dad finally called up and said, baby girl, um, you've been over there long enough to have some kind of paperwork by now. <laughs> you know, uh, what's going on? You know, and I was over in Pullman. Any of you all that know Pullman, it's very easy to be distracted. So I was finding my way in a lot of different ways. Um, but finally, I went into my advisor's office and said, uh, uh, look, daddy's not paying for me anymore. What kind of degree can I get? And uh, ended up with a degree in general studies. <laughs> Who goes to college for six years and gets a degree in general studies? That would be me. Okay. However, looking it, just if you believe that everything happens for a reason, that worked out really well for me because I've had a very eclectic career, but very wonderful career. So at the time that I walked away from that, after all of that investment that my parents had put into me, they just thought I was selfish. You know, how selfish can you be? to just walk away from that. But I'm gonna say to you and whoever this message is, that's the point where you have to look within. That's the point where you have to find your own source, find your own, I call it your own inner bling. And I'll tell you why, because you're gonna to have to hold on to that. Everyone's not gonna be happy with your choice. And everyone was not happy with my choice. And so as I went through my Valley experience, and there's going to be a valley experience. As I went through that, that's when the most amazing people showed up in my life. Because there are people that hang around you, that just hang around you for the title that you have, or the money that they think you have, or the power or influence that they think that you have and can give them. They're not there for you. And that's what I learned. As soon as I let go of all of those titles and everything that made me me, you know, and in my journey, like I said, I was the city EEO officer. I had these titles that made me in, I call it a star in the ghetto, but that people perceive that you have um, influence. Once all of that went and they're like, what? You don't have a job? Who are you? You know, you're tied to that title. Once that was gone, they scattered like roaches. I don't know if you've ever seen roaches when you turn a light on, bam, they go. That's, that's what I call them, scattered like roaches. And now I'm stuck with me. I'm stuck with me. Nobody's around. My family, you know, my parents love me to death, but I'm the one that's always been special. You know how you use, oh, bless her heart. That's, that's me, you know. Melanie, that's my special child. You know, bless her heart. You know, that's me. So here she has just had a great job, great education, and she's just gone off and let it all go. So yes, I'm in my valley. I, yes, I, am, I experience depression. But you know what? I also found strength. I found my inner strength and I found my focus. I found my focus. Lord, I don't know what I want to do, but I know what I don't want to do. What do I want to do? Okay, I'm going to get into my mission in life. What is my mission in life? I want to acquire massive financial wealth so I can spend the rest of my life giving it away. Mission. You can spit out the mission statement of your company. What's your mission? What is your mission in life? What do you get up every day to do? And when I decided acquire massive financial wealth, I was like, ooh, how am I going to do that? What do I like to do? I like to uh, have summer all year round travel and shop. Can I make a job out of that? I want to have summer all year round travel and shop. That's getting down to the very basics of what I like to do. <laughs> I'm just saying. And once that all came clear to me, then I was able to make a plan. And that's what I'm saying to you. What is the basic core of your desire? 
Because once you connect that, I call it psyche and soul. When your psyche and your soul align, okay, it's all about you. Can't nobody stop you. I don't care what kind of negativity comes your way. When you get that psyche, that mind right, and it's in alignment with your soul, when you talk to me about sunshine and shopping, whoa, hallelujah. And can I make a job out of it? Oh, I'm on that mission. So what did I do? I said, okay, I summer all year round. What is it that I've got to do? Well, I'd already been to Africa. Okay, so when it's winter here, it's summer in Africa, right? So what if I made me a business? Shopping, importing and exporting. Y'all thought clothes. I'm talking, look out at the Port of Tacoma and you see those container loads. Somebody's got to shop for that, right? Why not me? Why not go to Africa? Because I also have that philanthropic piece. And when you think about Africa, you always think about the poor, starving babies and the bellies and the flies. That's all of the images that we see. It's more than that. A lot more than that. So what if I get into a business that I can travel, shop, sell, help, psyche and soul? I'm like, I'm on it, but I don't know anything about that. <laughs> what do you do? You got to go back to school. You got to go back to school. You got to accept the challenge. And that's what I did. I found Pacific Lutheran University. I found the Master's in Business Administration program and at 52 years old, this was my favorite looking class. <laughs> oh yeah, talking about finance and all this stuff, all these equations that the math guy that just came in for, I was backstage like this. <laughs> right, but I got an MBA now, right? And I'm like, oh yeah. Some, I remember something vaguely about that. But I found it. I found the passion. And I'm fast forwarding now to say that it took me five years to graduate, but I graduated. And I was able to make my parents proud. I've been to Africa now like, what, 14 times? And have started to make my own plan. But that's the goal, that my next life, is going to be about that. So then I can make money. I can help people. My psyche and my soul is aligned. I'm not unhappy anymore. My parents love me again. Well, I shouldn't say that they never stopped loving me, but I'm not as special <laughs> as, as I used to be. You know, and they still say, bless my heart, but they say, bless my heart with really proudness. You know, so my challenge to you through my little teeny story right now and a little snippet of it is what is it that you desire and do you have the courage to go for it? Because you need to just do that. Go for it. God bless you.